This Acer laptop is made out of a few different laptops. I'm Andrew and in this video I'm going to show you how I transform one pile of trash into another, but functional. This laptop here was actually this laptop here. This is Acer Aspire V3 571 and the original specs on this laptop are Intel Pentium B960 CPU, 4 gigs of RAM and 500 gigs mechanical disk. And this one is Acer as well and the model is I think E1531G. The boat from the outside looks different but from the inside the boat are almost identical. So the 571 or this one I got it with a motherboard, some RAM, disk and power adapter and some other parts but without display the case is very damaged and the keyboard is non-functional. And the 531G or this laptop I got it without a motherboard, no RAM or disk but the case is in a better condition. The keyboard is half functional, the speakers are good and the display with the both hinges are fine. Except the bezel. The bezel is broken but this is not a big deal. I move most of the parts from one case to another case. I had to make a couple of small modifications. The space from the inside of the case is almost the same and I have no problem fitting the motherboard and few other parts. The format factor of the motherboard is the same, so the motherboard is fitting in the both models, except there is a very minor difference to the layout, to some other parts. But with a very minor modifications, everything is fine. Also to the 531G, I had to stick and repair the plastics below the hinges, which is noticeable, but this is not causing any problems with functionality. I started making this video a couple of months ago. And unfortunately, I don't have videos where I did some other repairs to the case because I didn't believe that I was going to make this laptop functional again. I had so many troubles with this laptop, but then while testing the laptop, unexpectedly the laptop just shut down. And the problem was the motherboard. The motherboard was already damaged and repaired. And now the motherboard just died. Then I collect some parts that I need to replace. And with the help of a friend, somehow we manage to bring the motherboard to life again. Then again, one more thing has happened. The BIOS or the CMOS got bricked. I don't know how, but we took out the BIOS chip, we put a BIOS chip on the programming device and we loaded a new BIOS. But again, this is not all. The laptop worked very shortly and again, the laptop went off. And at this point I had already given up. But after a while one of my friends bought some nice equipment for testing and we found out that one signal line of the motherboard is missing and I think that the signal that is missing is connected with turning on the motherboard and waking up the hardware and telling the hardware to start up. Somehow we fixed this problem but it's not all over. Later in this video I faced another problems. Now. When the motherboard was working, I moved to re-clean all the components from dust and dirt. Before, I already have cleaned most of the parts, but these parts were standing aside for months. So again, I had to cross over a small dusting off. The motherboard, I washed it using isopropyl alcohol because to clean some leftovers from the paste that I used for repairs. The other parts I cleaned it using isopropyl alcohol as well and standard things as always like brushes, vacuum cleaner, soft cleaning napkins, cotton buds and etc. The bezel is broken diagonally on the both sides, but this is easy fixable with a strong glue and a little patience. After I fix the bezel, I move to assemble the laptop and do some upgrades. The CPU upgrade I have done it before and instead of using Intel Pentium B960, I go with the Intel i7-3630QM. The laptop chipset support the CPU and on this hardware there is no 30 minutes limit, so the CPU is fully supported. While assembling, I upgrade the RAM as well. Instead of 4 gigs of RAM, I put 8 gigs in total and instead of using mechanical disk, I used SSD. The SSD is a standard today, 
and there's no point of using mechanical disk. And also for this laptop, I got a new keyboard. After assembled the laptop, I have done one more final cleaning and brushing. And finally, I thought that everything is good and the laptop was ready. The laptop sometimes will start, but sometimes not. So, again, I cross over at disassembling the laptop and testing. But now I found that the problem was coming from the CPU. I replaced the CPU and the laptop started working normally. I cross over in-depth testing and again assemble the whole thing. Last time I got a couple of CPUs for a very cheap and this can be expected. Actually here everything can be expected. I mean, when you do repairs to some old hardware from who almost anyone gives up. After assembling the laptop, I installed Windows and I continued with further testing. But now one more thing has happened. The Wi-Fi card has stopped working out of nowhere. Anyway, I have some Wi-Fi cards in supply. And finally the laptop is working normally as supposed to be. Actually, this is a very common and usual when you repair something, especially something that is falling apart. And yes, unsuccessful projects. I have some stuff that I hope one day I will be able to repair. Sometimes restoring takes more time. And this is the main reason why I don't make a lot of videos. I mean, making real restoration videos to some stuff can be a very time consuming job and as well very unpredicted. And after many changes and repairs, this Acer laptop is ready for use. Now, I continue with doing more tests and everything is working perfectly fine. This is an old laptop, but still this machine is good for most daily basic tasks. I mean like browsing the web, listening to music, working with documents, I mean to Word, Excel, PowerPoint, PDF and etc. And it's good for watching videos and movies. I try to play some games, but because this machine has no dedicated GPU, most low requirement games are going just fine. However, some newer games have glitches and missing textures due to lack of hardware rendering and support. But here I come to an idea. Why do I not add some GPU like I have done before? And to this laptop, I connect an older NVIDIA GPU. And with the GPU, the things have changed. Everything is going much better. This is possible using a device called EXP GDC. Here, on this laptop, the connection goes over a mini PCI Express, which means I had to remove the Wi Fi from below. And now, to have internet access, I have to use USB Wi Fi dongle. For the power supply, I used Dell Power Brick. But here can also be used a power supply from a PC. The XP GDC is available with a few different connections like Mini PC Express, NGFF, Express Card Slot, and M2. The M2 version is a little bit different and supports newer graphic cards and newer laptops. I'm not exactly sure about which laptops are supported because there are some laptops listed as supported but the EXP GDC won't work properly or opposite. Also, in some cases using eGPU requires using a monitor or TV, I mean whatever, because the internal laptop display will not work while the GPU is connected. But in many cases everything will be just fine, like on this laptop. I mean, I don't need some external monitor or TV. The GPU support starts from the older graphic cards. Personally, I test graphic cards starting from NVIDIA 9000 series, I mean the older ones, and up to RTX 2000 series. Just with the RTX or the GTX 10 series, such as GTX 1050 and up to 1080 or 16 series, I used M2 connection. Also, I really cannot confirm which laptops are supported and which are not supported. Sometimes feels like there is no rules about support. I don't know, it's kind of messy. This Acer laptop with a dedicated GPU is running much better and much faster. The games are going very smooth 
and there is no problem with the missing textures or random graphic artifacts. It feels like using a totally different laptop. Well, and this is all about this Acer laptop, and I'm very glad because I made this laptop work again. I know, this is an old laptop, and maybe isn't anything special, but it's still good to do some basic daily tasks. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to back some stuff in a function again, maybe some tech, maybe some other stuff, and give a new life to something. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.